This video provides tips for successful implementation of IT Service Management, or ITSM, on the ServiceNow platform. These tips also apply in general, across the platform. Link timecodes for these topics appear in the YouTube description for this video. Here's a good tip to start with. Use configurations instead of custom code. The ServiceNow platform is highly customizable, but customization can have a downside. For example, writing and maintaining custom code takes time and effort, and scripts executing on the client can result in performance degradation. Also, if you rely heavily on custom code, you must test your customizations each time you upgrade to make sure they still function properly. There's a better solution. The platform provides configuration options for many features, making customization unnecessary. Often, it's as easy as flipping a switch or selecting a checkbox. These options are part of the platform, so ServiceNow is responsible for ensuring that they're compatible with previous versions and they function as expected after upgrading. Before writing custom code or making changes to the scripts provided in the base system, consider the performance, upgrade, maintenance, and support implications. And whenever possible, use configurations instead. Here's an example. In the service catalog, we could write client scripts to do these things under certain conditions. Make a variable read-only, hide a variable or make it visible, or make a variable mandatory. But ServiceNow doesn't provide support for client scripts, so if something goes wrong, we're on our own. We can accomplish these same things by configuring catalog UI policies. And that's the way to go, because it's simpler to implement and maintain, and is a platform feature supported by ServiceNow. Let's take a look at how this works in a catalog item. Finishing Services allows employees to order document printing, binding, and shipping services. Here are the variables for this item, and this is the order form. We want to make these fields mandatory, and this one mandatory only if domestic or international shipping is selected. Here's how we do that without writing code. These first four are easy. We just select the mandatory checkbox to make them mandatory. See, now the field is marked as mandatory and we can't order the item without filling in that field. And here we've made those other fields mandatory as well. Now we need to set the shipping address field as mandatory only if domestic or international is selected. And we do that with a catalog UI policy. This applies to a catalog item, so we'll leave that selected here. The catalog item is finishing services, and we provide a short description. Here, we identify the conditions that trigger this UI policy when the value of the shipping variable is domestic or international. This selected checkbox means the catalog UI policy actions will be applied when the form is loaded or the user changes values on the form. And this one reverses the effects of the catalog UI policy actions when the conditions evaluate to false. We save it and the Catalog UI Policy Actions section becomes available for us to specify what action to take. The shipping address variable should be mandatory, so we set mandatory to true. And here's our whole policy, which specifies what it applies to, when to apply it, and what action to take when the conditions evaluate as true. Let's see how it works now. When the shipping value is none, the shipping address isn't mandatory.
but when we select domestic or international, the shipping address is mandatory. And it's not mandatory when we select none again. That's exactly what we expected. Let's take it a step further and make the shipping address field not even show up unless domestic or international is selected. The triggering conditions remain the same. We just changed the visible setting to true. Note that if we wanted to make a field read only, this is where we would do it. The shipping value is currently none and the shipping address field doesn't show. So far, so good. When we select domestic, the shipping address field is displayed and it's mandatory and the same with international. The reversal works correctly when the conditions evaluate to false. This is certainly easier than custom coding, and catalog UI policies will remain stable when we upgrade, which wouldn't necessarily be the case with custom code. This leads us to our next tip, upgrade to new releases. Each release includes security and bug fixes, new applications and features, and enhancements to existing functionality. Upgrading ensures platform security and allows you to take advantage of new features. If you aren't using a lot of customizations, adopting new releases should be easy. And who knows, maybe the latest release provides a new configuration to achieve results you thought you'd have to implement through custom code. The third tip is implement a sound governance model. Governance provides a structure for sound business decisions. It helps key personnel understand business requirements, develop the ServiceNow platform, and run projects in an organized way. Successful implementation, management, and governance of your ServiceNow platform depends on establishing a sound governance model, including a platform support team, that will mature with your organization's requirements and needs. ServiceNow provides a series of documents to help you develop your governance model. You can access these through the links provided in the description of this video on our Now Support channel. For more information, please consult our product documentation, knowledge base, or podcast, or ask a question in the ServiceNow community.